Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Pepper. Yep. Vincent? I am here. Gibson? Uh, excused. Charity Catanzaro? Excused. Misho? Here. Witham? Here. Goodwin? Here. Cameron? Here. Austin? Here. Councilor Witham will lead the council in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next on the agenda is the recognition of our indigenous people, our native ancestral Americans. This meeting takes place on Indikina, which is the unceded traditional ancestral homeland of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki peoples, past and present. We acknowledge and honor with gratitude the land, waterways, living beings, and the Alnabuk, the people who have stewarded Indikina throughout the generations. Item four on the agenda are scheduled public hearings. We have two tonight. First up is a public hearing on Ordinance 1 25 to amend Chapter 30, Conduct in Public Parks, Section 2, Definitions Number 2, regarding edits to the list of city parks, which, if approved, would update the list of names of city parks in Chapter 30. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to Ordinance 1 25? Anyone who wishes to speak? All right. Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing on Ordinance 1 25. Uh, next, we have an ordinance, or excuse me, we have a public hearing on Ordinance 2 25 uh, to amend Chapter 13 Police Offenses, Section 3.1.D, uh, no parking anytime in regards to prohibited parking on the northerly side of Willan Drive. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to Ordinance 2 25? Anyone who wishes to speak? All right, seeing no one, I will close the public hearing hearing on ordinance 2-25. Next up, we have item five, which is comments by visitors. Uh, Summers or City Council and Mayor's Office welcomes all visitors and encourages you to voice your opinions and views at council meetings. In accordance with council rules 7-C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the council wishes to suspend the rules. Uh, the speaker shall not enter into debate with any person, the mayor, council member, city manager, or department heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight? Thank you. If you wouldn't mind saying your name and ward in which you live. Laura Berry, Ward 4. Okay. Apparently there was a rush to get up here, so here I am first. <laughs> uh, just here to, because I know I'm on the agenda for an appointment to the Historic District Commission, so I just wanted to make you all aware I am here and open to answering any questions if needed. So that was it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak during public comment? Else? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to agenda item six um, is the consent calendar. Uh, the chair will obtain a motion to approve the consent calendar, which includes the minutes of the city council workshop regarding wastewater <coughs> treatment facility future improvements that was held on July 15th, 2024, as well as the minutes of the city council meeting held on July 15th, 2024. Do I have a motion? Councilor Austin? I'll move to adopt the consent calendar as presented. Councilor Austin moves to adopt the consent calendar as presented, seconded by Councilor Cameron. Question for the council is on the adoption of the consent calendar. If you are in favor of the motion, you will state by saying aye. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. All in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? All right, ayes appear to have it. Ayes have it. Consent calendar is adopted. Item seven on the agenda is comments by city councilors. Are there any comments this evening by councilors? Seeing none, we'll move on to eight, which is communications. We have two communications this evening. Uh, first up, we have a letter of resignation uh, from Ward 4 Summersworth School Board member Todd Marsh. Uh, City Clerk, could you please read the letter? July 28th, 2024, regarding school board discontinuation. Mayor Girding, it is with a heavy heart and a sense of an incomplete com commitment that due to unanticipated changing personal and professional responsibilities unrelated to school board working dynamics, I submit my notice of discontinuance from the Ward 4 school board position effective July 31st, 2024. I am proud to have served in multiple elected service positions starting in my early 20s during each of the last four decades and with different generations of Summersworth residents. Although many names are now lost to a continuously evolving community, they served with a selflessness and honor, as do current public servants within Summersworth. While I expect a similar memory fate, I hope my contributions were of value and that I remain true to myself, including during complicated and challenging public service times. 
Throughout my elected service journey, I reminded myself and occasionally others that I worked collaboratively with but not for councils and boards. Also, I worked collaboratively with but not for mayors and chairs. I worked primarily for the people of Ward 4, broadly the greater Summersworth community, and in a way that maintained my own values. I hope my practice of those values, including striving to respect more than disrespect, compliment more than criticize, and overall civil civility more than discourtesy, has been more of a strength and a virtue than a weakness and a vice. I am honored, honored to have had the opportunity to be at the table of discourse to solution, find better alternative futures for our ge younger generations. It is the students within our school community that will, in the near future, become decision makers and lead us forward. I hope that I demonstrated to my own children that public service is not just for other people and that it can be sought by all that seek to serve, including a spectrum of ages, genders, thoughts, and overall life experiences. Summersworth can be proud of our past, should appreciate our future, and know that with intentional continuous improvements, improvement efforts, our brightest days are yet to come. I hope that my jer life journey allows me to return to those efforts once again as public service is in my blood and Summersworth is in my heart. Sincerely, Todd M. Marsh. Thank you. Our second communication is a letter of resignation from uh, Paul Robitis from his city board positions. City Clerk, can you please read the letter? Dear Mayor Girding, this email represents my official notice of resignation from my city board's position with the Planning Board, Site Review Technical Committee, E911 Committee, and the Traffic Co Safety Committee, effective Monday, September 16th, 2024. The decision to leave these boards position is due to my pending retirement date at the end of September, which is also the time frame that my wife and I are relocating to North Conway. It has always been my opinion that residents cannot just live in a community and take from it. They also need to give back in some form or fashion. My way to give back was getting involved in board positions that has helped shape our community. For the past 15 plus years, it has been my pleasure to feel part of the team at City Hall. It has been gratifying, challenging, and an enriching experience. I am totally proud, truly proud, of what we have been able to accomplish together. It has been a great pleasure to work alongside the many individuals on these boards over the years with the city and will always appreciate the experience and knowledge during my time with the city of Summersworth. I am hopeful that the notice period is enough for you to work on my replacements. Furthermore, please let me know of any help that I could be in the future. I love this city and will always be my home. Thank you so much. And a, a very genuine heartfelt thank you to both uh, Mr. Marsh and Mr. Robitis for their work uh, with the city of Summersworth. I, I know that they've both been on a number of boards and committees over a number of years and um, they will be uh, missed on both of these uh, positions that they've been holding for a while now. So thank you to them. Um, item nine on the agenda is petitions. Uh, we have none tonight. Uh, item 10 is the mayor's report. Um, First up, I just wanted to remind folks that there is a state primary and special election on September 10th. Uh, it's coming up quick. It's with less than a month now. Uh, this election will determine state level candidates for the general election, uh, which will then be held in November 5th, as well as um, this election will also help elect new members to the open seats on Ward 5 School Board, Ward 3 School Board, um, and at large school board. I encourage all residents to make the time uh, and vote in this important election. Uh, secondly, as mayor over the past month, I have attended two groundbreakings here in the city, one which was today, actually. Uh, the first was a new apartment building that was being built on Elm Street uh, here in our downtown. And the second, as I mentioned, was today for a new solar array that will actually be the first in the state of New Hampshire uh, to be built on our landfill and Superfund site on Blackwater Road. Uh, excited for both of these projects to come to their completion uh, and kind of see them as two very important pieces to tackling two very different uh, challenges that the city and the state and in fact the nation faces being the housing crisis and uh, the importance of like sustainable energy. Um, the apartment buildings on Elm Street are slated to be completed in 2026 and the solar array is planning, uh, they're planning to have it up and functional hopefully by the end of the year. So I'm hopeful that we'll all have a ribbon cutting that we can go to before the year is out for that. Um, lastly, just wanted to express my appreciation for the Summersworth Police Department uh, for another successful national night out. Uh, the event was, or is always, one of my favorite events that we have here in the city every year. Uh, it certainly serves as a great opportunity for community members to meet um, you know, our first responders, both local and statewide. Um, 
kind of get to know them and see how they keep our communities safe. Uh, there are also so many vendors from local organizations. You get to meet folks from around the community. Uh, there were performances from Soul City Dance, uh, tons of really cool uh, equipment and vehicles that you got to sit in and learn about, including like ambulances. There was a giant like bear cat from uh, the state uh, police. They brought that as well as a helicopter. And they also had raffles that awarded uh, tons of prizes to community members. Uh, it always brings a lot of joy to my heart. Uh, to see how this event continues to grow every year. So I just wanted to personally thank you all and everyone who helped organize that event uh, and ran it and everyone who participated in it. It was a, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and with that, that respectfully concludes my mayor's report. Um, next on the agenda is item 11, which is reports of standing committees. First up, we have the Finance Committee, uh, Chairman Witham. Thank you. The Finance Committee met last Wednesday, August 7th. Uh, City Clerk's Office was a bit light on staff last week, so the minutes are not yet prepared, but I'll try to recap as best I can uh, from the agenda. Um, I think as we all know, uh, the Fire Department uh, actually started under Chief Delner's time here, uh, interim Chief Delner's time here, uh, reallocated uh, the training tower money that was not enough for a training tower to some other uh, Fire Department equipment needs. Um, including a new rescue boat and trailer motor, all of that, um, as well as uh, some training props, uh, time for staff to do the training. Uh, and all of these individually were within the Finance Committee Spending Authority, so we allocated, uh, we authorized the purchase of a new fire rescue boat uh, through Mid-Atlantic Rescue Systems. Uh, the total of that, once you include the, the motor, the boat trailer, uh, the lighting, and all of that, is $43,558. Uh, we approved the purchase of an EV suppression blanket. So for EV cars, uh, difficult to extinguish. There are specialized blankets, if you will, for this. We approved the purchase of that piece of equipment at $5,907. Uh, a bunch of fire training equipment, simulated doors for practicing force entry, uh, fire extinguisher training equipment, things of that nature. Total of that was $49,402 um, and about uh, a little over $12,000 in uh, money for uh, training of, of the staff on these various pieces of equipment. Uh, in some total, it's $120,000 and again, that was all grant funded. So. Uh, Finance Committee authorized the purchase of all of that, so we're, we're super excited to get that sort of over the finish line, if you will. We then had a review of uh, budgeted vehicle purchases for FY25. Um, I think as counselors know, and many in the public know, we do what's known as a lease purchase agreement. I always want to articulate it's different than a lease of a car that you or I might do for a personal car. Uh, these are annual payments, uh, if you will, leases that, but at the end of the payment term, which we're looking at five years, would be uh, the purchase of the vehicle. Uh, there are, there are uh, four vehicles being planned for purchase, uh, a marked police cruiser, uh, which would be the Ford SUV, one unmarked police cruiser uh, for the detective division at the police department, a pickup truck uh, for code enforcement and a uh, small van for our recreation uh, division. Um, there are readings, uh, resolutions for those uh, on our agenda this evening. Uh, resolution 225, 325, and 425. I would respectfully request that we waive rules to act on those tonight. Uh, these vehicles are limited difficult to get, so the longer we wait, the more difficult that process gets. So it would be our advice to try to act on this sooner rather than later uh, to have staff uh, procure these vehicles. Um, we also had an update on uh, the status of the fleet at the police department. We did have one vehicle, one police cruiser, a marked unit that was involved in a motor vehicle accident. Uh, the the cost to repair the vehicle is more than the cost uh, of the vehicle, uh, than the value of the vehicle, rather. Uh, so the vehicle is, in essence, totaled. Um, we're still trying to determine our best course of action to replace that vehicle, as there is still uh, a lease payment or two still due on that vehicle. So we ha still have money owed. 
likely the insurance money will pay for the remainder of the lease, at least that's the hope, but will be uh, short money to actually purchase a new vehicle. So we'll have to look at some other funding source to bring that fleet back up to a specification. We had a discussion of a couple of properties that were granted uh, tax relief under Chapter 31 of our zoning ordinance. Uh, it's the 79E that we often refer to it as. Uh, one of those properties was 142 and 144 High Street, uh, somewhat across the street from Noble uh, Street on High Street. Um, the uh, property owner was in attendance at the meeting and was actually, we actually had a uh, discussion with him. Uh, the improvements that he has done there are ongoing. Uh, many are done. The, he, he showed pictures of many of the interior renovations. But the bottom line, it's not done yet. Uh, and it was supposed to be done by now. So uh, we recommend granting him an extension and there's action under other tonight uh, to do just that uh, with an estimated completion time of fall of next year. I think the end of September is what we, we said. Um, another property, which is 25 High Street, which if you exit out here and look uh, diagonally, uh, is a Baker property uh, currently here. Uh, it does not look like he's going to proceed with the renovations that he had planned for that property. He may, in fact, market that property again. Uh, so we are likely to just see that uh, Chapter 3179E application just lapse. Uh, or if we have to take action to remove it. Uh, but uh, it's with the understanding of the property owner there. So um, Betsy Andrews Parker from CAP was in attendance. Uh, we had a discussion of a funding request that they had uh, for uh, a new shelter that they've acquired uh, in Rochester on Washington Street, uh, the Home for Now shelter. Uh, the Home for Now Shelter was a, a private organization, a not-for-profit, uh, that just found it difficult to manage the property uh, on their own, so they needed uh, um, a larger resource, if you will. So CAP has taken ownership of that property and the running of that property. Uh, however, they're dealing with some gap funding right now that was created largely by some one-time money that was used to support the project from COVID. As we know, the COVID monies have all run out now, and how do we fill that gap? So they're looking to, uh, quite frankly, the Tri-Cities, uh, at least initially, although they have reached out to every community in Stratford County, uh, to assist with funding this, this gap. Um, and the Finance Committee uh, did support on a 301 vote uh, to recommend to full council that we do support this funding for the Home for Now shelter. Uh, it would be for Stratford County residents. Uh, if Summersworth were to contribute to the funding of this, uh, there would be no cost to our Human Services Welfare Department uh, for any placements in the shelter from Summersworth. So although it's not a one-for-one, one, uh, it is at least uh, offset a little bit by some cost savings in our Welfare Human Services budget line uh, here in the city. Um, Betsy Andrews Parker did say that this was a one-time funding request just to fill this funding gap that was created by the, the COVID relief shortfall, uh, and they don't see a need to come forward asking for that anymore. And just to be very clear, this is a standalone shelter. This is a full-time, year-round shelter, not just a warming center like on Willand Drive. That is a separate conversation and discussion for another day. So I just ask council and importantly the public to understand that these are two different things and are not at all related uh, other than that they deal with homeless uh, needs. Uh, Finance Director Smith gave us an update on ARPA funding uh, and with all of the pieces that we have in motion uh, our ARPA funds will have been spent by the end of uh, well within a short amount of time here. Uh, we had a general discussion of reporting and miscellaneous, but uh, that generally concludes the report of the Finance Committee. Thank you so much. Uh, next up is Government Operations Committee, Chairman Michu. And no report this evening, Your Honor. Thank you. Next up is Economic Development Committee, Chairman Goodwin. No report. Thank you. Uh, next up is Public Safety Committee, Chairman Pepin. Yes, I do have one. Right. Uh, we met on July 17th at 4.30 here in the Council Chambers. Um, the first thing on the agenda was passing the May 13th meeting 
uh, at PASS 3.0, the minutes of it. Uh, and we had Chief Macklin give us up an update on staffing. Uh, basically, they have three open positions right now. They're in the process of doing scheduling interviews and starting to work through that process. He has five that are in the police academy right now. Hopefully, they'll be graduating in the end of October here. Uh, and he also has one certified police officer that they did hire that is basically on field, tra field training, uh, training. And basically, he will be all done probably at the end of the month, so he'll be right fully on. And also, the five that cadets that are coming back out, they're going to have to be on 16 weeks of field training in the city of Somerswood before they'll be out on their own. So um, he did give us an update on the... Uh, on the social worker that uh, the police department is trying to hire, hire to be part of the Somerset Police Department and work with so people that have substance abuse. Um, basically, there is no change on that. We're still waiting to see if we got the grant for that. It's a three-year grant. Uh, hopefully, if things go well at the end of three years and it's working out very well, that the city will pick up the rest of the grant f to try to keep uh, that person on. On, on, on employment for the city of Somersworth. Uh, Dover and Rochester do, do have one already. Uh, it's been working out great for them and it seems like it's gonna be something that's uh, gonna be really needed in the police services uh, in the future, so. Um, okay. Uh, under communications, basically that uh, the chief went over the repeater system that's going to be put onto the hilltop, former hilltop school, which is uh, owned by owned by Schimberg. This uh, radio frequencies have been already granted for the highway department. That was one of the holdups, and right now the biggest holdup is for uh, getting the radio systems in. Two way is working with Schimberg to actually get the equipment uh, scheduled times and whatever. Uh, till they get a date for the equipment that can't be done right now. So um, we also did talk about a little bit about the speed limit sign that um, the portable speed limit sign that's been posted and that's been moving around the community. If you notice, I think it was on 108 last week. So uh, so that's uh, um, the fire department. We did talk about the grant. I think Councilman Wyndham just about covered every inch of it, so I'm not going to go into that anymore. Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, he. Uh, Chief Moore also did bring up the uh, command vehicle. The command vehicle was been in in house, uh, but it's been waiting for radios, just like we've been waiting for radios for the everything else in this in this city. Um, and basically, uh, hopefully, there will be. Um, it's, I think it's gone out this week to actually have the radios put in. So, so hopefully, that'll be in the near future. Um, they also have two openings due to. Um, Chief, Chief Moore getting promoted off a of lieutenant, so that opens up another firefighter's position. And us filling, um, having a deputy fire chief position put in, so that opens up another one. Uh, they had three candidates for it, uh, so it looks like they're probably going to have that. They were waiting for the city manager to go through the uh, process of his interview system afterwards. Um, also, we didn't have at the time that um, who the deputy chief was going to be, Jim Monoclus, uh is uh, going to be the new fire, uh, assistant fire chief. So that was put in. Uh, he also did give us a report on the fencing around the uh, air conditioning units around the fire station to kind of like block the view and kind of make it look a little bit more presentable that people are not looking at it. Also, he um, talked about putting shrubberies. If you go by there now, you see little trees planted up there. Uh, people leaving the ballparks were going cutting across the lawn and everything, so this was to help deter that, that from happening. Um, also, the Flood family also donated a red maple tree in, in, uh, in the name of uh, Brian Flood, who passed away from the, from the in, on July 25, 1923. Uh, it wasn't work-related. He, um, he he passed away off-duty, uh, so their parents donated a red maple tree. I just wanted to bring that out. Um, they're also working to try to get rid of the uh, firefighter foam, the F FPAS foams. Um, that has to be destroyed and taken care of in the proper time, so they're looking at, uh, they have a program set up in August at the city of Dover to actually try to get rid of that foam and, and stuff. Um, EMS report, 
uh, Paul Robitis did give us his notice that he was leaving September 27th, which was going to be very sad to see him go. Um, he did introduce us to Chris Hogan. He went into details that he's worked with Chris for many, many years. Uh, Chris has also worked in the city of Somersworth under a different, different company here. Uh, he's very, very well um, adapted into the service as far as his qualifications and everything else. Um, and he comes highly recommended by Paul. Um, he says that he wanted to leave this place in a good spot because this is home for him and he always wants it to keep it that way. Um, we, we also did, uh, and also Chris did come up and speak to us and then basically give us his input and his education into the, into the uh, EMS system in, in the city of Somersworth. So um, we also, uh, I don't know how to put this, the town of Rawlinson is looking for an inquiry of trying to have a community fire service Thing. Uh, I guess they have a questionnaire of uh, 10 questions that they wanted to ask us about seeing if we wanted to get involved as a community, f basically uh, almost like a state-run organization or uh, where everybody shares things and, and buys things or whatever it is. We're not quite familiar with exact <coughs> exactly what, what benefit would be for us. Um, the city manager is going to have Chief Moore look into it for more information, possibly get back to us on it. Uh, other things that were discussed was uh, the sports, uh, the sports hub on Willand Drive. We talked about the parking situations of possibly there was talk about having a um, uh, resolution for no parking on one side or whatever. We did discuss that. Um, we discussed how many parks, parking lots, uh, parking sites they have, 260 on site, and if there would be a need with a big event if they would have to have no parking signs on the side of the street. Um, the committee kind of felt that at this point at the time, we felt that it probably wasn't necessary at this, this point. Um, we wait and see how the situation come, came out and then we'd act on it then, or at least that's the way we felt about it. Um, we also did talk about uh, winter band parking. Um, we talked about the three places that we have, Jules Bison Park, uh, Noble Pines, um, and then also we did discuss the city manager brought a proposal of across from the old city hall, that proposal and we're all kind of like in favor of that also. And we ended our meeting at 517. Thank you. Uh, next up we have Public Works and the Environment Committee, mm -hmm. Chairman Witham. Thank you. <clears throat> Public Works and Environment back on, met back on July 16th. Um, our first uh, detailed conversation involved uh, Scott Orzenkowski and Kevin Dodds. Um, both members of the Conservation Committee. Uh, they went into some detail about a proposed trail network in conservation land up at the Mallee Farm uh, property. Um, the proposal is for a rather extensive trail network that would start and end at about where the softball fields are located. The, the thought was that the parking lot for the softball fields could serve not only parking for the fields but could also serve as parking for folks that wanted to go and use recreation trails there. There are elements of a trail network that are already there. Some were for off-road vehicles, some were for an old farm that was on the property. And the idea is to try to leverage some of that in the development of a trail network uh, out on the uh, property. Uh, they would be seeking grant funds to, uh, to uh, hopefully construct the trails, which are largely improving the trail beds. There are a couple of stream crossings that would require some sort of a, a bridge, if you will, uh, maybe not too dissimilar from what we have up at Willand Pond. Uh, we did discuss uh, trying to make things cohesive in terms of how we do things. Um, this is all in its infancy right now. This was just to sort of, if you will, gauge the appetite of at least a council committee. Uh, the Public Works and Environment Committee was generally supportive of this, uh, knowing full well that if it were built, there would be ongoing maintenance that would be required, uh, not dissimilar from the other trail networks that we have. Um, as you know, we spent a fair amount of money to upgrade the bridges at uh, Willand uh, pond uh, trail network uh, so we're hopeful that we can learn lessons and do the right thing out of the gate uh, for these trails uh, if they are constructed so 
Uh, bottom line is uh, there is support from the Public Works and Environment Committee to continue to move forward down this path. I would ask for counselors that are not on that committee, if for some reason you have any reservations uh, about this project moving forward, uh, that you share those with Manager Belmore and can certainly communicate that to the Conservation Committee. But again, Public Works and Environment didn't see any need to stand in the way of their efforts to move this forward. We uh, had a discussion with Finance Director Smith about the closeout of the Cemetery Road project. Uh, as you may recall, uh, the city bonded $3.8 million for that project. Uh, that project is complete. Uh, it is closed out, and it came in under budget by a little over $241,000, so just shy of a quarter million dollars under budget, so that was good. Um, since it is bonded money, it's already been bonded, we are uh, authorized, if you will, to allocate that to another bondable project. Uh, we are, uh, the Public Works and Environment Committee seeks to uh, allocate the remaining money, that $241,000 plus dollars, uh, to the High Street Sidewalk Project. That is, uh, the final engineering is uh, being wrapped up and it'll go out to bid hopefully this fall. That is for the section of sidewalk from West High Street to South Street, just beyond Memorial Drive. Uh, we're anticipating that when that goes out to bid, our initial sort of uh, thumb in the wind estimates of that project are just shy of a million dollars to fix that sidewalk. Uh, so this uh, quarter million, if you will, will go a fair ways towards helping to offset the cost of that particular project. We then had a discussion, uh, this issue was actually raised by uh, Councillor Vincent, but I think all committee members agreed uh, that the manholes from, if you will, South Street to about Sinclair Ave on High Street, uh, uh, many of them, particularly from the corner where the pharmacies are to Sinclair Ave, are in a uh, dire need of attention. They need to be uh, reset. Many are sinking, cracked, failing. Um, uh, there are, I, I think, 18 of them through that quarter. They are all sewer manhole covers that are in the travel lanes. Uh, the city engineer estimates that to repair these would be just shy of $50,000. Uh, and the Public Works and Environment Committee supported moving this forward uh, expeditiously to see if we can get them repaired. Uh, it would not come out of the operating budget. It would come out of our... Uh, sewer uh, budget, which is a dedicated enterprise fund. It would likely require uh, supplemental appropriation at, at some point here. Uh, however, committee supported moving forward. Last I knew, city staff is looking to find a vendor. They were going to talk with Grenice, who is doing the Constitutional Way project, to see if they uh, could, uh, perhaps since they're mobilized here in the city, uh, do this work. We'd like it done before winter, if at all possible. So. It's on the radar screen, we'll keep you posted. Another project that uh, we, to keep you posted on uh, is to address the erosion that's happening at the Riverwalk parking lot in the downward access trail to the Riverwalk off of Buffumsville Road. City staff continues to look at alternatives and they found a geo mesh uh, type of uh, system uh, that would be uh, sold by E.J. Prescott. Uh, it basically encapsulates the gravels and stuff that you would have so that they don't wash away. Uh, E.J. Prescott would oversee the installation of this, likely done by our public works staff. Um, so it would be a learning piece as well, an educational piece as well as uh, a stabilization of the parking lot and the embankment. Um, the committee is really excited about this concept. It seems affordable, uh, and we want to move forward with it. Uh, but as you might imagine, because we're in such close proximity to the river, there are various boards and permits that this needs to, uh, to address before we can even do anything. So some temporary measures have been done, but uh, this long-term fix is in the works, uh, and more to come on that as it unfolds. Uh, we had a lengthy discussion about uh, the proposed no parking on Willan Pond, which is Ordinance 225. It's before us for action tonight. 
Similar to the Public Safety Committee, the Public Works and Environment Committee uh, actually uh, supports uh, to uh, not pass this ordinance change. Uh, the uh, parking spaces that are on site for the, for the sports dome as proposed were vetted through the planning board. They were determined to be enough. The conversation that seems to have occurred right now that's warranted this discussion about the no parking is for larger events. Um, and the larger events, uh, there's actually a condition of approval that was uh, embedded into the planning board approval for this project that requires the uh, property owner to have off-site parking and shuttle services for these and even police details as necessary. So that has already been thought of and addressed through a condition of approval of the planning board. So like the Public uh, Safety Committee, we think let's watch the process unfold and see if it's a problem. It seems that part of the impetus for this too is the blocking of fire hydrants. Um, however, there's already state statute that doesn't allow you to park in front of a fire hydrant. So that's and to some distance either side. I think it's 50 feet, maybe 100 feet. Uh, maybe we could mark that, but uh, that's already a ticketable offense here in the city. So. Um, Again, there's no need to, to address that because there's already a state statute that addresses that. We had a discussion on snow emergency public parking options. This came to us from the direction of the mayor, uh, from the mayor's housing task force. Uh, as the housing task force looks to encourage more uh, multi-use uh, property in the downtown, uh, it may necessitate the, the, the additional on-street parking to accommodate this. Um, the biggest concern with on-street parking uh, often is the winter snow emergencies. Uh, we had a discussion about could we do odd even sides of the streets. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, many of those streets right now already prohibit parking on one side or the other. So that's already in effect. And for some of the streets, uh, if you were to allow parking on one side of the street, they're so narrow as it is now that it would be difficult for a full-size plow truck to navigate. So we didn't really like that idea at the end of the day, never mind the enforcement and messaging and communication of that. Not that it couldn't be done, but it, it, it seemed to be a bit of a leap. Uh, but we did like what we're already proposing to use on Main Street for uh, the Elm Street property is to designate spots on Main Street, much like we have at the Noble Pines and the uh, Jules Bisson Park, dedicated parking spaces that people could utilize in the wintertime for, if you will, uh, out of the way parking, I won't call it off street, but out of the way parking during a snow emergency, they could then move it the following day and the public works crews could then clean it up sort of after the fact as they do now with these other parking spots. So that's the uh, uh, proposal that is supported by the Public Works and Environment Committee at this time. We had a discussion of a number of miscellaneous items. Uh, the only one I will really comment on uh, was captured in the city manager's report to us which is uh, the replacement of utility poles around the community. Uh, in the past, our utility poles were owned sort of jointly between Eversource and Consolidated Communication. Uh, in fact, Consolidated Communications owned more of the poles than Eversource at one point in time. Uh, through a series of changes, Eversource now owns all of the utility poles in the community. Uh, generally, that's viewed as good. You're dealing with one vendor versus two. Uh, Eversource uh, is in the process of inspecting and replacing uh, aged and failing utility poles. They actually have a formal tool that actually gauges the uh, rigidity of the pole, for lack of a better way to describe it. And between now and winter, they are proposing to replace 1,000 utility poles here in the city. So that's a pretty significant endeavor. Uh, they do require dig safe permits uh, through our public works staff. I believe to date our public works staff has issued uh, over 150 dig safes for poles and more to come. Uh, our public works team uh, has been planning to meet with Eversource representatives to talk about sort of the dynamics of this process uh, in terms of when the old utility poles would be removed uh, because that's been a source of contention here in the city and uh, we're waiting for a report back by Director Brabinski and City Engineer Hall at a future Public Works and Environment Committee meeting. 
but if you drive around the city, you'll see that work is already sort of underway. So uh, that'll conclude my report. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Ask a question. Sure. Um, <clears throat> on the no parking on Willen Pond, um, my end is, uh, I must be confused because I thought the rationale for the no parking there was to facilitate egress and, and exit from the venue um, at major events. So I'm confused. As I understood it from the committee level, and I defer to the C manager if he has more detail, uh, there was concern about the blocking of fire hydrants, which is already prohibited by state law as we vetted out at the committee. And the other was that during some special events, the parking spots in the facility may be, and the word is may, be more not enough uh, and that people would resort to parking on the street but as I articulated the planning board has a condition of approval that requires the property owner to come up with a plan for these special events to allow for uh, off-site parking and shuttle service so and these would be things like home shows and things of that nature I suppose but I don't know if the manager has something more but that was my understanding at the committee level all right thank you um, Next up is Recreation Committee Chairwoman Cameron. We have not met you, Anna. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda is item 12, which is reports of special committees. Are there any reports of special committees this evening? Okay. Seeing none, uh, I'll turn it over to the city manager to deliver his manager's report. Thank you, Your Honor. I have the following comments that I provided to council as part of the meeting packet. I'm going to jump down new business, as I quite often do. Under Ordinance 325, regarding amending police offenses, under Chapter 13th of our city ordinances regarding parking, um, I provided you a copy of uh, the lease that we're doing on Main Street for the Elm Street project that was mentioned a short time ago. And Council voted on April 17, 2023, to authorize uh, the city manager to enter that into that lease agreement. And after going through um, some legal um, legal reviews it was ready for to be signed but the developer was kind of delaying to see if he could purchase other property and not have to lease all those spaces so we've recently itch, uh, executed the lease agreement and one might say this is just a housekeeping to amend chapter 13 uh, police department would like this incorporated into police offenses so there's a record of it there as we did with the uh, what was mentioned with the Jules Bisson and the um, Noble Pines uh, parking leases or our leases are articulated in our city ordinance. So I did provide you a copy of the lease and also uh, some language changes to Chapter 13. In regard to the new resolutions 225 and 325 and uh, 425, which is uh, in regards to the budgeted lease purchase agreements for the, for the vehicles that were mentioned by both the uh, Public Safety Chair and the Finance Committee Chair that uh, underwent uh, budget scrutiny and, and some changes as we move forward. And it's before you um, for action, at least a first reading uh, and perhaps a suspension of rules for this evening. So I think uh, much of that has been explained through written documentation, committee meetings and, and uh, the budget process itself. Resolution 525 regarding um, authorizing the manager to enter into a grant agreement with the uh, U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for a community project funding grant to provide final design of accessibility improvements and expansion at the public library we have here in Summersworth. And I gave you, uh, we're receiving, uh, uh, Director Smith and I are receiving quite a few documents from HUDs and regarding getting this rolling. So we, um, we can move forward with this. We have a draft document from PlaceWork. We had vetted that through council committee to stick with place work since they did the first phase of the uh, development of the expansion and design improvements for accessibility. Um, so we want to accept the grant and the next resolution speaks to authorizing the manager to enter into a contract with place work. I did provide you a draft contract with them. Uh, it's a little bit uh, north of what we received for grant, which is $500,000, uh, but we have yet to sit down with them and. Uh, we intend to utilize uh, both library staff uh, and city hall staff in regards to sitting down with them and coming up with a final uh, 
approach to this project. So again, we did receive a grant um, through uh, Senator Shaheen's office for Congressionally Directed Spending Grant. Uh, we did apply this past year, just as a footnote, for $6 million towards the construction. But that, uh, as you well know, every year it's quite competitive across the country. We weren't successful this year, but I'm hoping once we have a shovel-ready design, we can go back next year and try to pursue further congressional spending for the actual construction uh, of uh, our plan to expand and improve our library for programming and accessibility. Uh, the next resolution, after going through the ones for the library and acceptance of the grant, we have three of them in a row, 725, 825, and 925, that discuss the manager being allowed to enter a grant agreement with the Department of Business and Economic Affairs for Invest New Hampshire uh, demolition funding to use or distribute to demolition of vacant or dilapidated buildings. So we have one, uh, two actually for the Elm Street project, uh, 200 Main Street, and then one, um, <coughs> excuse me, for the 85 Elm Street. Um, so 285 Elm Street. Uh, I did provide you some background material from Director Mears. This has been sort of a fast-moving uh, situation in regards to these grants. We thought they were all depleted. Then uh, lo and behold, we got a call, at least Director Mears got a call and said, there's more funding. Do you have any projects? Uh, she worked uh, hard to reach out to, to these uh, applicants in the state as well as the two, 200 uh, um, 200 Main Street projects. So again, Elm Street is actually 85 Elm Street and 67 Elm Street. I apologize for that. 200 Main Street is the Chinberg property that's moving forward, and uh, we'd want to move forward with uh, trying to seek funding for that project also. So it's quite a bit of money with all those three grants. Uh, we can get reimbursed. The Elm Street people can get reimbursed even though the buildings are down. The Chinberg property, of course, the buildings are still standing, so that would help uh, provide them an impetus to move forward sooner than later. Uh, once they get their approvals in order and, and some funding is, is approved by the, at the state level. So there's some, again, fast-moving deadlines here. Uh, I know it's a lot, lot to comprehend, perhaps, and wrap your arms around, but I think we're familiar with these, these projects. And uh, there is a deadline coming up in August that we're just made aware of, so if you could please consider waiving your rules and allowing this to move forward, that would be greatly appreciated. Under informational items, Mallee Farm Conservation Easement, I, th I think the Chair of the Public Works and Environment Committee went, went through uh, quite a bit of that. Again, as I included in my information uh, comments here, um, the committee did endorse moving the project forward. Um, I gave you some information that was provided by uh, Michelle Mears and the Conservation Commission, and as the uh, Chair of the committee mentioned, um, please let me know if there's any concerns. Uh, I have received some documentations from the federal government that I provide you at least a copy of uh, to move this forward to some surveying and some assessment of that property to, to move it to the next uh, uh, to the next level of uh, acceptance. So um, without objection, I'll be uh, looking to sign that this week. City Ordinance Chapter 31 was spoken to again by um, a committee chair. That's the Community Revitalization Tax Release Incentive Program we have here, based off of state law. Again, um, at the August 7th meeting, as the Finance Committee Chair reported out, we discussed the possible termination of these tax relief covenants for properties at 25 High Street and the 142-144 High Street properties owned by two, two different parties. I contacted both developers, if you will, uh, or property owners, um, Mr. Baker is in the process of selling 25 High Street, and he's fine with any revocation action being approved. If he doesn't sell it and he decides to keep it, then he will reapply uh, more than likely for this tax relief incentive relief, or well, this uh, relief in regards to our uh, ordinance. Uh, Mr. Hughes attended, as mentioned, and uh, he would appreciate uh, consideration of a um, extension. Uh, they both go back to 22-23 due dates to get all the improvements done. We've gone through that. Our ordinance talks about a public hearing. Um, I would, uh, as required by city ordinance, I recommend we schedule a public hearing at the September 3rd city council meeting regarding termination of these covenants. Yep, without and, objection. Thank you, Your Honor. And subsequent vote being placed on the agenda under other. 
Um, certainly you could look to um, revoke uh, one or both or to uh, not revoke the uh, Hughes property and, and uh, move it to an extension that he was willing um, and thought was doable, which was the end of November th 30th of uh, 2025. Sewer Assets Management Plan Workshop. I provided you some information from Amber Hall, our city engineer, regarding our development of a citywide sewer assessment uh, asset management plan. And as part of the grant funding, we're required to hold a public workshop. And uh, the staff and I both re recommend that it would be good for the council to hold that public hearing, uh, on, strike that uh, workshop prior to the September 15 council meeting at 6 o'clock. And we'll go over a presentation of where we're at and what this is all about. Um, Your Honor. Without objection, I do believe that date is the 16th, though, not the 15th. Or it should be the, the 16th, my apologies. So that's the second Monday of September, correct? Yep. Yeah, okay. It's the 16th? 16th, I All right. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. That concludes Point my comments. Point of order, Your Honor. Yes, Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. A uh, question for the city manager on the Baker property. Can you just explain to the uh, councilors and the people here at home, um, so if he... Uh, decides to lapse on that, w what's the process? Does he have to pay anything, or is it paid from here on out as far as the money that he got relief from? City manager. Well, there's been very little relief granted because it was frozen, and he hasn't done any improvements. Okay, so yeah. that, but that continues now if he decides to if keep it? If you revoke it, then it's done. It's done. Unless he replies again, or if the new owners want to uh, um, have a similar uh, rehabilitation plan, then they would have to come in and, and apply to the council to freeze it at its current level. Right. If, if it's revoked, it may increase through, through our property-wide revaluation. So. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. <clears throat> yes, Councilor Goodwin. Just a question. In my experience with um, 719 and other communities, there is an effective date for relief, which is usually only after beneficial use of the property has been uh, realized. And I just want to clarify that this property has, and my guess is likely has not received any relief yet because there has been no beneficial delivery of a product. Is that correct? Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. All right, that brings us to item 13 on our agenda, which is nominations, appointments, and elections. Under nominations, appointments, and elections, in accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the following are being nominated uh, this evening. First up is William Barden for appointment to the Planning Board as an alternate member with a term to expire in September 2027. And next is Laura Berry for reappointment to the Historic District Commission with a term to expire September 2027. Appointees will stand in nomination until our next regularly scheduled meeting. Yes, Councillor Gibson. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I know it's um, not listed there, but how do you handle um, Ward 4 School Board resignation? Yep. Is it uh, an appointment for a full two-year term? Nope. It's like we've done in the past. So there will be a temporary um, appointee until the next uh, election, which at this point will be the November general election. Okay. So we'll have a so yeah, two it week. will go on a federal. Yes. We'll have a okay. two-week uh, application period uh, from tonight forward. Uh, any applicants that come forward would then be approved by this council like normal, and then uh, we'd have a normal special election with the general election in November because it's too late to put it on with the other special election that we're doing at the September primary. All right. Uh, next up is item 14, which is items that have been laid. Yes. <laughs> Councilor Goodwin, Sorry. so many points of order tonight, you guys. Keep me on my toes. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you're kidding. Um, just because we have one of the nominees here this evening, uh, I wonder if it would be appropriate to suspend council rules to allow councilors to ask her questions should they have any so she does not need to come to a second meeting. Is that a motion? Y yes. All right. Councilor Goodwin asked to suspend council rules to vote on Laura Berry's nomination tonight. Is there a second? Seconded Second. by Councillor Gibson. Question for the Council's suspension of Council rules to vote on Laura Berry's nomination tonight. Discussion? Yes, Councillor Witham. Oh, this is just on the suspension of Council rules. It is, yeah. 
Okay. Seeing none, if you are in favor of the motion, uh, you'll say by saying aye. If you're opposed, you'll say by saying no. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Ayes appear to have it. Ayes have it. Council rules are so uh, far suspended. Uh, with rules <coughs> suspended, uh, we can make a motion to confirm a vote. Is there a motion on the table? I'll make that motion. Okay. Councilor Goodwin moves to assume uh, confirm. confirm Laura Berry for reappointment Second. to this Doric District Commission, seconded by Councilor Witham. Um, again, the motion before us is to uh, confirm Laura Berry for the Historic District Commission discussion. Yes, Councilor Witham. Thank you. Uh, I certainly support this, uh, yeah. this uh, nomination. Uh, Laura has served as on the HDC and as chair for, for a number of years now. Uh, she has brought a level of uh, professionalism, discourse uh, to that board. Um, uh, she and I have not always agreed, uh, which is okay, because we've had very civil discourse about things. Uh, but she has led that board with uh, a, a tremendous amount of skill. Uh, and I think it's helped uh, tremendously here in this community. So appreciate your efforts. Why I support you. Great. Other discussion? Yes, Councilor Goodwin. I'll briefly add that I concur um, with Councilor Witham's comments. Um, as the council representative on the HTC, I, I get to witness uh, uh, Laura Berry's um, skill firsthand and agree that she has provided uh, a good sense of structure and purpose to the HTC, um, which has at times struggled with, um, with that. So uh, an excellent resource to the community, and I'm happy to be appointing her again. Other discussion? Okay, seeing none. Um, again, the question for the council is the confirmation of Laura Berry for the Historic District uh, Commission. If you are in favor of the motion, you will state by saying aye. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. All in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? All right, ayes appear to have it. Ayes have it. Our nominee has been confirmed. Congratulations. All right. That brings us to item 14, which is items that have been laid upon the table. We have none tonight. Uh, brings us to 15, which is unfinished business. First up, we have our ordinances. Uh, tonight, we uh, have ordinance 1-15. Uh, uh, the chair will recognize the clerk for a second reading on ordinance 1 dash, excuse me, not 15, 1-25, uh, to amend chapter 30, conduct in public parks, section two, definitions uh, number two, regarding edits to the list of city park, uh, which if, if approved would update the name uh, or the list of names of city parks in chapter 30. City Clerk. Ordinance number 125, to amend chapter 30, conduct in public parks, section two, definitions number two. Thank you. Ordinance 1-25, having been read a first and now second time, is open to further amendments. And seeing none, um, I will look for a motion on ordinance 1-25. Councilor Gibson. I move that uh, ordinance 1-25 be approved. Yep. Uh, Councilor Gibson moves for the adoption of Ordinance 1-25, seconded by Councilor Mishu. Uh, motion for the Council is on the adoption of Ordinance 1-25. Discussion? Okay. Seeing none, if you are in favor of the adoption of Ordinance 1-25, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. <coughs> City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Cameron? Austin? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Michaud? Yes. With them? Yes. Good one. Yes. Ordinance 1 25 has been adopted. Uh, next up, uh, the chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on Ordinance 2 25 to amend Chapter 13 Police Offenses, Section 3.1.D, uh, no parking anytime regarding prohibited parking on the northerly side of Willand Drive. City Clerk. <coughs> Ordinance number 225, to amend Chapter 13, Police Offenses, Section 3.1.D, no parking anytime. Thank you. Ordinance 2-25, having been read a first and now second time, is open to further amendments. Seeing none, I will look for a motion on Ordinance 2-25. Councilor Witham. I move that Ordinance number 2-25 be defeated. All right. The motion before Council is for Ordinance 2-25 to be defeated. Is there a second? Councilor Vincent. All right. Uh, again, with the motion before council to defeat Ordinance 2-25, uh, we will open it up to discussion. Yes, Councilor Willem. Just to articulate, which came out of Public Works and Environment Committee, uh, there is no identified need at this time. 
Uh, there are ordinances guarding the protection of the fire hydrant, so we can't park in front of that. Uh, there uh, is a condition on the conditions of approval with the site plan that for special events, uh, the owner of the property must have a parking plan to include off-site parking, satellite, mm -hmm. shuttle, and uh, potential for police officers. So we think there's no need for this action at this time. Thank you. Other discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, I just want to clarify uh, how you will vote. Again, if you are in favor of defeating this ordinance, uh, Ordinance 2-25, you will state by saying yes. So again, a yes vote is really a no vote. Uh, if you are not in favor of defeating it, you will state by saying <coughs> yes. Is that clear to everybody? All right, great. Uh, City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Misho. Uh, no. With him? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Austin? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? No. All right, ordinance 2 25 has been defeated. All right, that brings us to resolutions. Uh, we have uh, resolution 1 25. The chair will recognize the clerk for a second reading on resolution 1 25 to amend council rules and regulations, section 17, appointments regarding board and committee nominees, which, if approved, would advertise openings to city boards and committees 60 days in advance and would require applicants to attend council meetings for their nomination. City Clerk. Resolution number 125, to amend council rules and regulations, section 17, appointments. Thank you. Resolution 1-25, having been read a first and now second time, is open to further amendments. Seeing no amendments, I would look for a motion on Resolution 1 25. Councilor Cameron? Motion to adopt. To, to, is it to adopt? To adopt. To adopt. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Cameron moves to adopt Resolution 1 25. Is there a second? Seconded by Councilor Goodwin. Uh, again, motion for the Council is on the adoption of Resolution 1 25. Discussion? Councilor Vincent? Thank you, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be in favor of this. And, uh, it's not that I don't think it's a good idea. I just think that it's an extra added cost. We have such a hard time finding um, candidates uh, to fill these boards. Uh, and sometimes uh, I just think we're going to go 60 days out and we may come up with nothing. But that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. But I'm, I don't know if we're going to support this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Witham. Thank you. Uh, I know I'm not going to support this. It's an <laughs> unnecessary process. Um, uh, although I believe it's a good idea for an applicant to a board or commission to come to a committee meeting, much like Ms. Berry did the, this evening, uh, I don't think making a requirement is, is, is necessarily w what we ought to be doing here. I think the posting 60 days in advance is perhaps a, a, a bit burdensome uh, uh, and unnecessary. Uh, whether or not there's any cost, I don't know, but uh, I, I just don't think it's necessary. And I guess perhaps most importantly, uh, right now the nominees are brought forward by the mayor and then voted on by the council. It is but one of the few sort of, I guess, items under the purview of the mayor that he can actually do. As we know, the mayor in Summersworth is, uh, uh, runs our meetings. Uh, he doesn't vote normally. He votes to break a tie. I think in Mayor Hilliard's time on council, 10 years, uh, he broke two ties, uh, one for chickens and one for bees, so he became known as the agricultural mayor here in Summersworth. Uh, I believe Mayor Girding has already broken one tie, but uh, on something, I don't remember what it was, what but it, uh, it, it is not common at all. So the mayor is more than just someone to run a meeting. <laughs> there needs to be, and I understand we call it a weak mayor form of government because we have a city manager, but the mayor's involvement, dare I use the word politically, is to identify candidates that he would like to see on boards and commissions. They're validated by this council, but it is a bit of a, I guess, still a bit of a political <coughs> process. It's not just a process. And I think this resolution moves it in the direction of being more of a 
process, and I don't really like that direction. So I won't be supporting. Thank you. Other discussion? Councilor Goodwin. Thank you. Um, as the originator of this proposed amendment, um, I guess I'm curious how and who is burdened. Uh, is the person that is uh, planning to volunteer uh, one or more nights a month for a two-year term burdened by a one-evening appearance before this body to be available for questions? Is that an unreasonable burden? We are approving them to dedicate many hours, which we are thankful for, to the city. And I do not think it is an unreasonable burden for that person to be available to questions to this body. And the reason that I think that's important is because I do not know, based on the simple application we have, what a person's qualifications are, why we think they should be part of a given board or committee that they're expressing interest in. I get that we have a recruitment problem, but I, I don't feel comfortable just saying any warm body, sure, I have no idea who this person is. Our application form is quite simple, which is great. I don't want this to be a burdensome process in having a detailed application. That's why I would like to see them here in person. Best practices, sure. I'd like to make it a requirement because most people don't do it. And then we are left to rubber stamp applications of people some of us are not familiar with. And those that are familiar with, you know, from an outside perspective, as someone that hasn't been on the council for, you know, multiple uh, cycles, it, you know, you're just reappointing the same old people. And that is a perception that I think inhibits new engagement. And that's really the goal here. I want to be able to have a community where people know what the opportunity for engagement is and for us to vet people in a fair and transparent manner. And I don't see either of those things right now in the appointments. And this does not take away power from the mayor. He is still the person that has the authority to uh, appoint people. And with all due respect to the mayor, I think it's largely, I don't know how much vetting is done because we, you know, people are showing interest in engagement and uh, and we have openings, right? So it's I don't think there's a ton of of uh, influence. I mean, they, uh, there's pure influence really because he is the gatekeeper. But at, at the same time, it's not the mayor doesn't have the time or the resources to go out and knock doors and try and find the most qualified people and recruit them for a community service that they they don't want. He's largely accepting. Uh, you know, applications as they come in, right? So in my, in my, I don't think this burdens anybody. We already have the post openings, I believe, right? If the position's vacant, it gets posted. And so it's posting it 60 days ahead of time instead of not posting it at all. Or, you know, I don't, I don't know how that's a burden. And I, I don't think it takes away any of the power of the mayor. And I don't think it's unreasonable to have a person that is planning to spend multiple evenings, you know, communicate, uh, dedicated to the community to come before us in front of this body to answer questions. Um, I would also note that, you know, Laura Berry tonight showed up, great. We didn't have any questions for her. That's, um, that's totally fine and very reasonable. I think that's probably the case much of the time. But again, we're, you know, sh that's a person that we are familiar with, that we have a, uh, her resume on, and I, I you know, it's not surprising. Um, but that is not always the case, right? So I, I do think there's value in this, and I would appreciate um, folks' consideration to, you know, think about how, I guess, how people that aren't as in the weeds as we are would view this process. Other discussion? Councillor Gibson. I don't disagree with Councillor Goodwin on the basics. But here's, here's the real issue. It's recruitment, not approval. Um, how often do you have multiple people applying for a position? Okay. I think that instead of worrying about whether or not somebody's here to give a speech, we need to look into some way to recruit people to the process. 
and I know that one of the things that they are recommending and or other communities are already doing is finding a way to engage professionals, particularly in the planning and zoning and so forth boards to um, fill seats on those, to have a more professional viewpoint on activities. So I think what we really need more than this, and like I said, I don't disagree with the sentiment behind it, but is to find a way to recruit qualified candidates to fill the slots. And I don't know what that process is, I don't know how you go about it, but I think that's what we need to spend our time on more than worrying about whether or not somebody puts in an appearance. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're going to do Councilor Cameron first. She hasn't spoken, and then Councilor Vincent. Councilor Cameron. Thank you, Anna. Um, I am on this committee, and I will say we went round and round and round with these suggestions. Um, and this actually came out of a compromise of the things that we had discussed. And we thought by advertising 60 days out, that would give people an opportunity to step up, talk to people, um, ask what the boards were all about. And we thought a big component was for someone to come in front of us if they were interested in being on a board. So we could ask them questions or we could see who they are, put a um, name to a face, rather than just voting on a piece of paper, somebody we didn't know. So if that kind of helps anybody, that's where we kind of came up with this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Ron. The problem with this is the 60 days. So let's take the ZBA, for example. The ZBA loses two members at the same time, which can happen. I think it's happened before. And you have people who do business, that's the substitutes. You can go 90 days without a ZBA meeting because it got caught in that 60 days. And because you have the ZBA running the first Wednesday, you may miss it. So in the ZBA, somebody waiting for some variance that could be very important may not have that. Instead of having someone that you could put in there uh, as soon as you can get in there. So that, that's where I see the problem. And you might be able to relate that to some other boards. I'm not too sure about the planning because they have a lot of members. But it's the boards that don't have a lot of members that could be jeopardized with that. That's why I don't like it. <clears throat> Thank you. Other discussion? Councilor Witham. Thank you. Um, Maybe it is recruitment. I, I, I don't know. I, I've never seen a board position left vacant because we didn't have an applicant. So, it's, so I'm not sure there's a, a problem there. If the concern is there's a lack of applicants, well, again, are we unhappy with the lack of applicants? or Because there's not a problem with getting positions filled. So I'm not sure... Maybe there's a perception problem we're trying to solve here, but uh, I'm not sure there's a problem we're solving here through this. Um, I'm going to use one of the applications that we had tonight, uh, William Barden, for the planning board, which just had a first reading tonight. He submitted his application back in May, uh, and here we are uh, mid-August, so he's well over 60 days. He submitted his application before he knew there was an open vacancy on any board or position. In fact, he put down, if interested in serving on a board, what would they be? He listed Conservation Commission, Planning Board, and Zoning Board of Adjustment. The mayor has chosen to nominate him from the Planning Board, perhaps because he listed it here, maybe he had a conversation with him, I don't know. Um, if Mr. Barden comes to the next meeting, that's great. One of the things that I would do between now and the next meeting, because unlike Laura Berry, I don't know Mr. Barden, there's both a phone number and an email, and I plan to connect with him. That's my job because I'm voting on him to say, other than the material that you have here, who are you, why are you interested? And so there's a way to do it. Uh, maybe it's not public, and maybe that's the, the, the request, but uh, again, I'm just not sure there's anything broken here that needs to be fixed. So there you go. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes. I, I, I'd just like to comment a little bit. Uh, 
I have received phone calls from people that are applicant uh, on my home phone when they, where they've been interested in stuff like that. And a kind of like that one-on-one -on -one conversation that you can have with a person like that. And I, I've received several phone calls from people that have been on the boards. We get these applications, and the reason why a few years ago we asked for the applications to be filled out and what, what educations they had and stuff like this. So if we had any questions, we could call them and ask them. And, and I, I really think that that covers the bases. I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you. Other discussion? Councillor Goodwin. Again, I'll, I guess I'll reiterate, and it's good to hear, and now I've heard two different things. One, that we have a difficult time to fill the boards, and two, that we've never had difficulty filling an empty position. So I'm not sure which is true. But in either scenario, from, from my perspective, one of what I'm hopeful that this would help solve is a is recruitment of new people having interest and having seats that are currently held by incumbents people that are currently appointed be advertised in a way that they are currently not being advertised as an incumbent on our committees you have an advantage because you have experience and you're a person that we are familiar with and you have a voting record and that is an advantage that is your right as the incumbent that you have an inherent advantage there but it should not be a rubber stamp by this body that that seat gets reappointed with no advertising. We just appointed Laura Berry to the HDC. As far as I'm aware, that vacancy was not advertised. And I suspect that she is the most qualified person for that, given her experience, her education. Um, but you know what? I don't know that. This is a town of nearly 12,000 people. There could be a brilliant preservationist that came in that was like, you know what, this is my opportunity and I want to I want to engage and I think this our community deserves to give those new people uh, an opportunity to engage to challenge incumbency. Um, is it actually going to change the outcome? Nine times a ten, nine out of ten times, I doubt it. But for that one time, I think it's worth doing and I think it in shows the community that we value uh, transparency in the process, that we're not simply reappointing people that we are familiar with without positions being advertised. Um, I hear the concern on the, on the 60 days being perhaps too long, especially on uh, committees with less members. Um, I would be, I'd be comfortable with going down to 30 days. Um, and, you know, again, this is a rule, so it's, we could suspend council rules if there was a position where the ZBA had a mass exodus and, you know, two or three people left on a five-person body and there was going to be a problem, then we could waive rules to fix that problem. So I don't think this is burdensome on anyone. Um, and, you know, that's great. You know, obviously we have their contact information. We can call them. If I were an applicant, I would much rather come and speak here to nine people then get nine phone calls or to have to make nine phone calls. And so in some ways it's saving time, right? Like we have an opportunity to connect with them here. If we want to connect with them privately, obviously we have that opportunity, but it seems efficient and transparent to me. I don't, I get there's a sense of by my fellow counselors here that if it's not broke, don't fix it. I'm suggesting it's a little bit broke because we are, we, we appoint people with no advertising of their positions, and for new members of this body, you know, very little background, and then the burden's on us to call that person to then have a, you know, private conversation to try and suss, you know, what what's going on, and I, I just don't think that reads well publicly. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, Councillor Witham. Not to belabor this, but where would this be advertised beyond where it is currently? Oh, I mean, I know it would be more specific, I suppose, because right now if you look at the city website, Channel 22, there's this generic ad for uh, appointed boards uh, to give the mayor's office a call, I believe, something to that effect. Would th this would be more specific, and would it include newspaper, website? I mean, wh where would this be? The resolution currently reads that openings will be advertised and posted to the greatest extent possible to include City Hall, the library, government access channel 22, city website, and city Facebook page. 
I hope that answers your question. So there would be no cost. There is no cost. No. <clears throat> yes, Councillor Austin. Thank you. My question, I guess, becomes, let's say you've got five applicants for an opening. At this point, you know, the mayor would make a nomination of a person. Is it the intention of this uh, resolution that the mayor would then be required to bring all five applicants to the council? Not my, that is not my understanding. It would still be the single applicant that the mayor brings forward. Then I don't know how that addresses Councilor Goodwin's question about how do we know we have the best candidate. I have a problem with that. Thank you. Other discussion? Councilor Goodwin. If I may, it, back to my prior point of, uh, I think, in theory, this is one of the few things that the mayor has <laughs> direct authority over in city government um, and could be a very powerful tool to influence um, policy in the city. Uh, and if anything, this process, if it worked to draw more qualified applicants or more applicants would give the mayor more power in making those selections. As it is, I think we're largely getting rubber stamped one-off applications because we don't have a steady stream of or like you know a surf a surplus of people applying for <laughs> most of our boards so if anything i think this would give the mayor more power to make a better uh or more informed choice um so that would be my take on it other discussion yes councilor michu i'm just wondering i'm taking all this in because it came in front of governor notch that's where it came out of everybody has really good points Council Vincent made a really good point. 60 days does seem very excessive. I would even agree with like 45, even 30 days. But I'm just wondering right now that is there any interest among other councilors to send it back to government ops so we can redo this and see if we can come up with something a lot more agreeable for everybody? Is that a motion? <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Councilor Mishu moves to uh, resend this to Government Operations Committee to re-examine the resolution. Is there a second? Seconded by Councilor Gibson. Yes. Discussion. Procedurally, is that a motion to re-refer, not re -refer. to taper? Because then it would sit in committee till it's reported out. Yeah. Let's re-refer. Is that what you were intending? Re-refer. Okay. Motion mm -hmm. is to re-refer. Second, you still accept? Yes. Okay. All right. Motion is on the table to re-refer to Government Operations. Uh, Discussion? Is everybody clear? Uh, oh, is there discussion? Yes, yes, sorry. I'll stick with my earlier statement. I don't think it's broke. It doesn't need fixing, so. Okay. <coughs> Other discussion? Yes, Councilor Gibson? I stick with my earlier statement, but <laughs> just to clarify, when I was talking about recruitment, um, Councillor Goodwin does have a very valid point. It, it seems to be that time after time, whoever's on the board gets reappointment because there's nobody else there. Now, maybe it's nobody else is interested, but I think we need to, if nothing else, look at trying to find a more diverse, <coughs> excuse me, representation on the boards. Councillor Gibson, just point of just so you understand this should be a discussion on the re-referral oh uh, we've sorry. had a time to discuss the bill it's been a bit oh we do yeah thank you we do have a motion on the table to adopt oh. council stand a recess for five minutes while i look into the par parliamentary procedure please thank you for everybody, we looked into uh, the kind of order of motions, and a motion to refer to a committee is actually a lower order motion than a regular motion on a, a resolution. Um, therefore, we will have to hold the motion to re-refer for the time being. It's being withdrawn at the second. Is that okay? Yep. Yes. Thank you. Motion is withdrawn. That then brings us back to the original motion at hand, which is in regards to, I don't remember what resolution we are on. 125, thank you. <laughs> we have not made it very far. <laughs> Mr. Mayor? <laughs> yes, Councilor. Can Council. I move the question? 
Uh, yep, I think there was a hand on the right over here that will help move it along. Yes, Councilor Cameron. Okay, I'm making a motion to withdraw my. my yeah. Uh, I, I'm, okay. Withdraw your motion on. I withdraw resolution. my motion on resolution 125. Thank you. And the second was Councilor Goodwin. Do you agree? All right, also withdrawn. So the original motion <laughs> on resolution 125 has been withdrawn. Are there any other motions? <laughs> Councillor Goodwin. I'll make a motion to re-refer it to the Government Ops Committee. All right, Councillor Goodwin moves Second. to refer Resolution 1-25 to Government Operations Committee, seconded by Councillor Gibson. All right, we're back to kind of where we were. <laughs> so is there a discussion on the referral to Government Operations? So again, it is not about the bill. We've heard your thoughts, your opinions, your, your feelings. This is just about the referral to Government Operations. Request a roll call vote. All right, thank you. Councilor William requests a roll call vote. All right, seeing that there's no discussion, we will vote on the referral to Government Operations Committee for Resolution 1 25. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Austin? No. Pepin? No. Vincent? No. Gibson? Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? No. <laughs> it's a tie. You guys are brutal tonight. <laughs> oh my God. I vote yes. Refer, re refer it so we can move on. <laughs> there we go. All right. It has been referred to government operations. Hopefully, uh, they have hours of tape now to look back on to help their discussion on this resolution. And hopefully, by the next time it comes to us, it's a very quick vote. All right. Next, we move to agenda item 16, which is. Um, First up, we have ordinances under, this is new business. Uh, chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on ordinance 3-25 to amend chapter 13, police offenses, section 3.1, parking regarding leased parking spaces in the downtown business district. City clerk. Ordinance number 325 to amend chapter 13, police offenses, section 3.1, parking, August 12th, 2024. The City of Summersworth ordains that the ordinances of the City of Summersworth as amended be further amended as follows. Amend Chapter 13, Police Offenses, Section 3.1, Parking by adding the following. 1. Leased parking. When signs are erected giving notice thereof, it shall be lawful for persons po possessing authorizations issued by the City Manager pursuant to a lease by and between the City and the owners of property located in the Downtown Business District of 85 Elm Street to allow their lawfully leased tenants use of the following 44 parking spaces described as follows. Main Street, Easterly Side, beginning at Crosswalk across from Fair Court, 30 spaces heading in a southerly direction. Main Street, Easterly Side, beginning at the access road to 130 Main Street, 14 spaces heading in a northerly direction. This ordinance shall take effect upon its passage. Sponsored by request, Mayor Matt Girding, approved city attorney. Thank you. Ordinance 3-25, time to read the first time, will remain in first reading until our next regularly scheduled meeting, uh, at which time we will have a public hearing. Uh, next are our resolutions under new business. Uh, first up, we have uh, resolution 2-25. The chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on resolution 2-25, which is to authorize the city manager to order one vehicle to be used by the Division of Recreation and one pickup truck to be used by the Office of Code Enforcement, which will be funded by a lease and purchase agreement. City clerk. Resolution number 225, to authorize the city manager to order one vehicle to be used by the Division of Recreation and one pickup truck to be used by the Office of Code Enforcement, which will be funded by a lease purchase agreement, August 12, 2024. Whereas the City of Summersworth's Capital Improvement Program proposes a replacement schedule for city vehicles and equipment to maintain fleet integrity and reduce maintenance costs. And whereas the City of Summersworth's fiscal year 2025 adopted budget provides funding a down payment for two city vehicles with accessory equipment to be acquired through a lease purchase agreement. And whereas the recommended vehicles to be acquired are one vehicle to be utilized by the Division of Recreation and one pickup to be used by the Division of Code Enforcement. And whereas city staff has evaluated the advantage of the use of a standard vehicle manufacturer acquisition policy and recommends the use of the New Hampshire state bid list for Ford vehicles as the most efficient method of pr procuring these new vehicles. And whereas the finance committee supports the ordering of these vehicles and equipment. Now therefore be it resolved by the city council of the city of Summersworth that the city manager is authorized to order one vehicle with accessory equipment to be used by the division of recreation and one pickup truck 
with accessory equipment to be used by the Division of Code Enforcement and to utilize the New Hampshire State Bid List, which will be funded through a lease purchase agreement. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Don Austin, Martin Pepin, Kenneth Vincent, approved City Attorney. Thank you. Councilor Witham. Yes, I'd like to move that Council Rules be suspended for a second reading on this resolution as well as subsequent resolution 325 and 425. I'll second, second. that. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Witham, would you be interested in 725, 825, and 925 as well? What was that yes. number? Yeah. What was that number? So the, th the six resolutions that Councilor Witham is proposing are 2-25. 3-25, 4-25, 7-25, 8-25, and 9-25. I'll second it. All right, seconded by Councillor Vincent. So again, the motion before us is to suspend council right. rule for a second reading, allowing uh, that to be held for resolutions 2-25, 3-25, 4-25, 7-25, 8-25, and 9-25. Discussion. <laughs> Seeing none, if you are in favor of the suspension of council rules, you'll say if I saying aye. If you're opposed, you'll say if I saying no. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. All right. Council rules have been suspended. Thank you. All right. Uh, City Clerk, would you please read resolution 2 25 for a second time? Resolution number 225 to authorize the city manager to order one vehicle to be used by the Division of Recreation and one pickup truck to be used by the Office of Code Enforcement, which will be funded by a lease purchase agreement. Thank you. Resolution 2 25, having been read a first and second time, is now open for further amendment. Seeing no amendment, uh, is there a motion on Resolution 2 25? Councillor Witham. Motion to adopt. I'll Councilor second. Witham moves to adopt <coughs> Resolution 2 25, second. seconded by Councillor Vincent. Question for the Council is on the adoption of Resolution 2 25. Discussion. Councillor Witham. Thank you. Question for the City Manager, which may lead to an amendment. I'm not sure. I know at committee we discussed with regard to the recreation vehicle, we changed it from van to vehicle because they're hard to get. Uh, is it possible that we may have to go outside of our procurement sort of policy to not purchase a Ford, which this inclines us to do, and should we amend to allow for another make or not? City Manager. Uh, th that's a uh, lovely idea. So I'd like to amend this, uh, if we could, uh, Your Honor, mm -hmm. without objection. No objection. Uh, the fourth whereas, the city staff has evaluated the advantage and use of a standard vehicle manufacturer acquisition policy and recommends the use of a New Hampshire state bid list for Ford vehicles as the most efficient uh, vehicles. In this case, I'd say where available and practical. So just add that to the end of that whereas. I'll second that. All right, so the amendment is to add <coughs> where available and practical to the end of that whereas, seconded by Councillor Vincent. I think it's just the simplest way. Exactly. Uh, so again, the amendment before us is to add that um, discussion on the amendment. All right, seeing none, if you are in favor of the amendment, you'll say by saying aye. If you are opposed, you'll say by saying nay. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All those. All right. The amendment has been added. Thank you. Uh, the motion is still on the table for the adoption of Resolution 2-25. Discussion? All right. Seeing none, if you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 2-25, you will say by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will say by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councillor Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Austin? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Michaud? Yes. All right. Resolution 2-25 has been adopted. All right. Chair recognizes uh, City Clerk for a first and second reading on Resolution 3-25 to authorize the City Manager to order one police cruiser and one unmarked police vehicle, which will be funded by a lease purchase agreement. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Question. In this case, is it going to be by title only for both the first and the second? <laughs> She'll do a... First reading, which will read the whole thing, and then a second reading, which will just be by title only. Can I amend that, the previous motion, for by title only? You can't amend a previous motion that's been passed at this point. Uh, if you would like to make another motion to read this or others by title only, you may. Um, resolution 325, 425.
525. And what was it, 725 and 728? The resolutions that we have previously allowed for a second reading on tonight are 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, dash 25. Then I'd like to have those all done by, uh, no. Um, I only want to do 3, 4, and 5. 3, 4, and 5. All right, the motion on the table is to read resolutions 3-25, 4-25, and 5-25 by title only. Is there a second? I do not see a second, so the motion okay. fails. All right, so we are back. City Clerk, will you please read uh, resolution 3-25 for a first and second time, please? Resolution number 325, to authorize the city manager to order one police cruiser and one unmarked police vehicle, which will be funded by lease purchase agreement, August 12th, 2024. Whereas the city of Summersworth's capital improvement program proposes a replacement schedule for police cruisers and unmarked vehicles to maintain fleet integrity and reduce maintenance costs. And whereas the city of Summersworth's fiscal year 2025 adopted budget provides funding a down payment for one police cruiser and one police unmarked vehicle with accessory equipment to be acquired through a lease purchase agreement. And whereas city staff has evaluated the advantage of the use of a standard vehicle manufacturer acquisition policy and recommends the use of the New Hampshire state bid list for Ford vehicles as the most efficient method of procuring these new vehicles. And whereas the finance committee supports the ordering of these vehicles and equipment. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to order one new police cruiser and one new police unmarked vehicle and to utilize the New Hampshire State Bid List, which will be funded through a lease purchase agreement. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Don Austin, Martin Pepin, Kenneth Vincent, approved City Attorney. Thank you. Would you please read it for a second time? Resolution number 325 to authorize the city manager to order one police cruiser and one unmarked police vehicle, which will be funded by a lease purchase agreement. Thank you. Um, thank you. Resolution 3-25, having been read a first and second time, is now open to further amendment. Seeing no amendment, I'll be looking for a motion on Resolution 3-25. Councilor Vincent? I'll make a motion and we move on that. Councilor uh, Vincent moves to approve Resolution 3-25, seconded by Councilor Austin. Uh, again. Uh, motion before us is to approve Resolution 3-25. Is there a discussion? Councilor Witham. I've had a thought sort of noodling around in my head, and, and I, I'll ask the city manager about it now. I, I might have briefly asked him in his office about it. I forget if I did or not. Where we reported out that we had the police cruiser that's now been totaled in the accident, does it not make sense to amend this and add a second marked police unit to the lease purchase. I know it's going to muck up the lease uh, resolution that's coming up uh, with tax exempt leasing. We'd have to redo that. But does it make sense just to, instead of ordering one now and then ordering another one in a month if we figure out how we're going to do it, just to do it all now as part of a lease? City Manager? I would just, um, I don't know if Scott has any further information from the uh, lease company, but uh, I would just take care of this right now um, and, and wait for the next meeting to introduce something. Unless you have, that you want to waive rules to see if I'd you like to any... waive council rules and have Director Smith, if he can articulate anything different. I'm just looking yeah, to make this objection. more seamless. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Director Smith. Come on down. <laughs> Good evening. <clears throat> yeah, I think I think it's a good idea to do that. <clears throat> I haven't squared away anything with the lease company on the present vehicle that was totaled, um, but the majority of those proceeds will go to pay off that portion of the lease agreement, and any proceeds we get back, um, we could retain those and use those with our down payment to down pay on the, the new lease. So um, it won't change the rate that we're paying it's it's a little over five percent um it'll change just the amount because we're adding the additional cruiser of course thank you and, and to that point if i may your honor you just may. continue I, I articulated earlier why we're doing the second reading is that these vehicles are in short supply so if we can jump now <coughs> i think it makes sense for keeping our patrol division equipment 
uh, up to where it needs to be. Thank you. So with that, I'd like to offer an amendment, if I could. You may. So um, I would add uh, it to be a two marked police cruiser down payment for in the second whereas it says for one police cruiser, it would be two. A second that. Right. So the oh. all this far. Yes, it occurs in the now therefore where it says one new police cruiser two. In the title. And in the title. Thank So, the amendment before us from Councillor Witham is to amend any location where it cites one police cruiser to change to two police cruisers within the resolution. Uh, I second that. Thank you. Councillor <coughs> Gibson. Um, Clarification. Gibson. Yes, Councillor Gibson. Um, don't know if it matters, but you're also getting an unmarked cruiser. Do we need to clarify that these are patrol cruisers? Okay. No, this is for one police cruiser, and then later on it says one unmarked. Right. So it will remain as one unmarked, but have it be amended, if approved, at two police cruisers. Okay. Okay. All right. Discussion on the amendment. Seeing none, if you are in favor of the amendment, you'll say by saying aye. If you are opposed, you'll say by saying no. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? All right, eyes appear to have it, eyes have it. Amendment has been adopted. Resolution 3-25 has been amendment. The original motion is still on the table to approve resolution 3-25 discussion. All right, seeing none, if you are in favor of the adoption of resolution 3-25 as amended, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Boston? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Michaud? Yes. All right, resolution 3-25 has been adopted. Brings us to resolution 4-25. Uh, chair recognizes the clerk for a first and second reading on resolution 4-25, which is to authorize the city manager to sign a lease purchase agreement for the purchase of city vehicles and equipment. City clerk. Resolution number 425, to authorize the city manager to sign a lease purchase agreement for the purchase of city vehicles and equipment, August 12, 2024. Whereas the fiscal year 2024-2025 adopted budget contains an appropriation for a down payment toward the purchase of the following city vehicles and equipment. One police cruiser, one police unmarked vehicle, division of recreation vehicle, division of code enforcement pickup. And whereas city staff solicited quotes for financing this purchase through a lease purchase agreement and recommends entering into an agreement with tax exempt leasing corp. And whereas the finance committee for the city of Summersworth reviewed these quotes with city staff and supports utilizing a five year lease purchase agreement for the purchase of the vehicles. Now therefore be it resolved by the city council of the city of Summersworth that the city manager is authorized to enter into a lease purchase agreement with tax exempt lease corp utilizing the lease terms recommended by the finance committee for the acquisition of city vehicles sponsored by councillors david a witham don austin martin pepin kenneth vincent approved city attorney thank you and for a second reading if you wouldn't mind resolution number 425 to authorize the city manager to sign a lease purchase agreement for the purchase of city vehicles and equipment all right, resolution 4-25 have been read a first and second time is now open to amendment cancer with them Yes, simple amendment here. The first bullet point where it reads one police cruiser to change that to two police cruisers. Second. Mm -hmm. All right. Amendment before us is to amend uh, resolution 4 25. <coughs> have the first bullet point to state two police cruisers, seconded by Councillor Gibson. Um, uh, discussion on the amendment. All right. Seeing no hands we will if you are in favor of the amendment to resolution 4-25 you'll say by saying aye aye, aye. So you'll say by saying no <coughs> all those in favor aye. 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 all those opposed all right eyes appear to have it eyes have it we have amended resolution 4-25 move that we adopt 4-25 as amended councilor with moves to adopt resolution 4-25 as amended seconded by councilor pepin uh the motion before the council is the adoption of resolution 4-25 as amended discussion seeing none 
If you are in favor of the adoption of resolution 4-25 as amended, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Austin? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Michaud? Yes. All right. Resolution 4-25 has been adopted. All right. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading, just a first reading on this one, <laughs> on Resolution 5-25 to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for a community project funding grant to provide final design and accessibility improvements and expansion at the Summersworth Library. City Clerk. Resolution number 525, to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for a community project funding grant to provide final design of accessibility improvements and expansion at the Summersworth Public Library, August 12, 2024. Whereas the city of Summersworth contracted with place work of Portsmouth, New Hampshire to complete a feasibility study for an expansion of the Summersworth Public Library to provide access to all levels and meet the evolving needs of the library. And whereas the city of Summersworth utilized the results of that study to apply for a community project funding grant through Senator Jean Shaheen's office administered by the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development to provide final design for the improvements outlined in the feasibility study. And whereas the city received a notification that it has been awarded a congressionally directed spending grant in the amount of $500,000 for this purpose. And whereas the grant is a 100% grant and does not require any city matching funds. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to execute any documents and agreements necessary for the grant's execution and take any and all other such actions relative to this grant determined to be in the best interest of the City. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Don Austin, Martin Pepin, Kenneth Vincent, approved City Attorney. Thank you. Resolution 5-25, having been read at first time, will remain in first reading until our next regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, next, the chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on resolution 6-25 to authorize the city manager to contract with Placework of Portsmouth, New Hampshire to provide final design services for a proposed expansion ex and accessibility improvements at the Summersworth Public Library. City Clerk. Resolution number 625 to authorize the city manager to contract with Placework of Portsmouth, New Hampshire to provide final design services for a proposed expansion and accessibility improvements at the Summersworth Public Library, August 12, 2024. Whereas the City of Summersworth contracted with Place Work of Portsmouth, New Hampshire to complete a feasibility study of a proposed expansion of the Summersworth Library to provide access to all levels and meet the evolving needs of the library. And whereas City staff utilized the feasibility study to apply for a grant to fund the final design of the proposed expansion of the library and has been notified the City has been awarded the grant in the amount of $500,000. And whereas city staff is recommending the city utilize the grant proceeds and contract with Placework of Portsmouth, New Hampshire to prepare the final design of the proposed expansion of the library. And whereas the finance committee has reviewed this recommendation with city staff and supports awarding a contract to Placework for an amount not to exceed $500,000 to prepare the final design of the proposed expansion of the library. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city council of the city of Summersworth that the city manager is authorized to contract with place work of Portsmouth, New Hampshire to prepare a desi final design of a proposed expansion at the Summersworth Public Library to provide access to all levels and meet the evolving needs of the library and to take any other actions relative to this project determined to be in the best interest of the city. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Don Austin, Martin Pepin, Kenneth Vincent, approved city attorney. Thank you. Resolution 6-25, having been read at first time, will remain in first reading until our next regularly scheduled meeting. Um, the chair will recognize the clerk for a first and second reading on Resolution 7-25 to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the Department of Business and Economic Affairs for an Invest NH demo to provide funding to use or distribute for the demolition of vacant or dilapidated buildings at property located at 200 Main Street. City Clerk. Resolution number 725, to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the Department of Business and Economic Affairs for Invest New Hampshire demo to provide funding to use, use or distribute for the demolition of vacant or dilapidated buildings at property located at 200 Main Street, August 12, 2024. Whereas the City of Summersworth City Council authorized the city manager to apply for Invest New Hampshire demo funds through the State of New Hampshire Department of Business and Economic Affairs for the removal of buildings and site work for 200 Main Street. 
and whereas the city applied for funding for Invest New Hampshire demo grant in the amount of $945,929 for this purpose. And whereas the city has not yet received notification of any grant award for this project, however, due to grant deadlines, the city council would like to proactively authorize the city manager to execute any documents and agreements necessary for the grant's execution in the event the Department of Business and Economic Affairs notifies the city of a grant award. And whereas the grant is a 100% grant and does not require any city matching funds. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to execute any documents and agreements necessary for the grant's execution and take any and all other such actions relative to this grant determined to be in the best interest of the City. Sponsored by Councilors Nancy Cameron, Don Austin, David A. Witham, <coughs> Crystal Parody Catanzaro, Martin Pepin, Richard Michaud, Kenneth Vincent, approved City Attorney. Thank you. In a second reading, if you wouldn't mind. Resolution number 725, to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the Department of Business and Economic Affairs for Invest New Hampshire demo to provide funding to use or distribute for the demolition of vacant or dilapidated buildings at property located at 200 Main Street. Okay, resolution 7-25 have been read at first and now second time is open to amendment. Yes, Councilor Goodwin. I'd like to recuse myself. Yes, thank you. Any other potential amendments? Seeing none. Uh, no amendment being offered. The chair will look for a motion on resolution uh, 7-25. Councilor Austin. I'll move for its adoption. Councilor Austin moves to the adoption of resolution 7-25, seconded by Councilor Pepin. <coughs> Councilor Thank you. I know that this uh, project came in front of the planning board a couple of months ago for a concept review. And at least conceptually at the time, it was planned that they would maintain the and utilize what remains of the old bleachery uh, mill. Is that still the plan, or would this call, or would this provide for its demolition, or do That's we know? Great question, City Manager. Do you know the answer? It's my understanding that uh, the plan has not been changed. So I, I think I would just note here in the discussion that as you sign said documents, uh, Mr. Manager, that we want to be careful that we at least look to preserve what remains of the mill building. I understand there are a lot of foundations and other aspects that might need demolition <coughs> there, but uh, I'm hoping it doesn't include what's left of that mill building. Yeah. Other discussion? Yes, Councilor Gibson. I agree with Councilor Whittem. I would like to see as much as possible preserved of any historic buildings. Thank you. Other discussion? Okay, seeing none, if you're in favor of the adoption of Resolution 7-25, you will state by saying yes. If you're not, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Cameron? Yes. Austin? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Michaud? Yes. Witham? Yes. Resolution 7-25 has been adopted. Thank you. All right, uh, Chair will recognize the clerk for a first and second reading on Resolution 8-25 to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the Department of Business and Economic Affairs for Invest NH Demo uh, to provide funding to use uh, or distribute to the, for the demolition of vacant and dilapidated buildings at property located at 85 Elm Street. City Clerk. Resolution number 825, to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the Department of Business and Economic Affairs for Invest New Hampshire Demo to provide funding to use or distribute for the demolition of vacant or dilapidated build buildings at property located at 85 Elm Street, August 12, 2024. Whereas the City of Summersworth City Council authorized the city manager to apply for Invest New Hampshire Demo funds through the State of New Hampshire Department of Business and Economic Affairs for the removal of buildings and site work for 85 Elm Street. And whereas the city received notification that it has been awarded Invest New Hampshire demo grant in the amount of $264,089 for this purpose. And whereas the grant is a 100% grant and does not require any city matching funds. Now therefore be it resolved by the city council of the city of Summersworth that the city manager is authorized to execute any documents and agreements necessary for the grant's execution and take any and all other such actions relative to this grant determined to be in the best interest of the city. Sponsored by Councilors Nancy Cameron, Paul Goodwin, Don Austin, David A. Witham, Crystal Parody Catanzaro, Martin Pepin, Richard Michaud, Kenneth Vincent, approved city attorney. Thank you. 
have second reading if you wouldn't mind. Resolution number 825, to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the Department of Business and Economic Affairs for Invest New Hampshire demo to provide funding to use or distribute for the demolition of vacant or dilapidated buildings at property located at 85 Elm Street. Thank you. Resolution 8-25, having been read a first and second time, is now open to amendment. Uh, Councillor Pepin. Move first. Oop, just, was a, do you have an amendment? I'm no, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Seeing no amendment, Councillor Pepin moves for the adoption of uh, Resolution 8-25, seconded by Councillor Cameron. Um, discussion. Uh, yes, Councillor Vincent. So a couple of questions come to mind. Um, where the city has control of the grant, and I'm not trying to be like a money whore or anything. I'm just... Maybe there's better words than that. I apologize, Your Honor. Um, I just think that, uh, well, maybe I am. Who, who knows? Maybe I am, okay? I'm public guy. Uh, <laughs> Thank God it's late. Okay. My question is this. Did the city encounter any expense during the demolition that we could recoup? And I mean by this... Oh, we had somebody go out and had to look at this. We had, we had, um, we had the code enforcement go over. We had to have somebody look at this, look at that. Is that in the realm of this to recoup that cost? That's my question to the city manager. City manager, Belmar. I don't believe so. We uh, incur some revenue through the demo permit and other permitting processes. My next question. My next question. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you for that. Uh, see, Major Belmont. Um, my next question is: um, When I look over there, it doesn't seem like they're done with the demolition. There's a wall over there. I haven't been by in a couple of weeks, unless it's changed. That is just a foundation wall. And do they have any intentions of addressing that and maybe making that better, or is that what we're going to look at? I sincerely hope that's not what we're going to look at. It's as far away from being complete. So there's a lot of construction work and, and uh, right. And so moving work that needs to be done yet. Right. So where I'm going with this is that that probably has to be demoed or work done. Do we have any say in that? And I know it's a far stretch, but or are they just going to or is that in the planning board's plans that they already looked at what that's going to look like? Belmar. I don't know if you have an answer. I'm, I'm not 100% sure of the question, but they're building plans. There was an, a site plan approval from the planning board and HDC, so their the entire project's being moved forward with concrete plans. No pun intended, but there's concrete involved. And I guess I'll end with this. I'll end with this, that, okay, so we helped them get the demo. Uh, money, which is a wonderful thing because that makes us look great. We help them. It helps them. It helps us. I just hope we're not looking at a little bit of an eyesore over there with what some of the stuff that they have left. I understand it's not complete. I get it. But you know how things go. Thank you. Uh, I saw a number of hands. I saw Goodwin, Witham, and then Gibson. Councilor Goodwin. Um, Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I was on the planning board when this project was approved, and I can assure you there's no remnant concrete wall that was on the site plan. Um, as uh, the manager said, it's uh, early in construction, having uh, being the project manager on 200 Main Street and a site with significant grade. Um, I can tell you that there's sometimes strategic reasons to leave building foundations in for um, runoff reasons or erosion. Um, so I'm sure that their uh, group of engineers have uh, advised them on how to best demolish uh, and remove structures on the site uh, to have minimal impact on um, the abutters and their budget. I would also note that the demo grant uh, requires a line item uh, schedule of values. Um, so there's a very specific scope of work that is being reimbursed by um, is being funded by the state and then administered through the city. So uh, adding to that scope after the grant has been submitted is not possible without amending the grant application. Thank you. Councillor Witham. Thank you. Um, 
There are a number of properties that have been demolished for the Elm Street slash Green Street project, uh, the old profile garage uh, and the so-called servants quarters and there was a small garage. Um, I would also note, it, which did get site plan approval and to Councilor Goodwin's point, there were no remnant concrete walls left there. If we're describing the remnant wall behind what was the Summersworth Hotel, uh, the hotel has been demolished, but that parcel has not been in front of the planning board for any site plan approval. So that remains to be seen. Uh, I would argue the old Summersworth Hotel and its derelict state looked worse than that concrete wall did, so we've made some strides. Thank you. Councilor Gibson. Um, I, I agree with both this and 925 as useful investments in redevelopment. The only thing that really bothers me about this is as far as the Elm Street Green Street projects, it feels like rewarding bad actors. And I'm probably the last person here that feels that way, but given the approval processes, um, I don't look favorably upon the developers. And I hope that those engineers aren't the same ones that told them they could build an underground garage. Thank you. Other discussion? Seeing none, if you're in favor of the adoption of Resolution 8-25, you'll state by saying yes. If you're opposed, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Cameron? Yes. Austin? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. All right, resolution 8-25 has been adopted. That brings us to Resolution 9-25. Uh, the Chair will recognize the Clerk for a first and second reading on Resolution 9-25 to authorize the City Manager to enter into a grant agreement with the Department of Business and Economic Affairs for investment or Invest in H demo uh, to provide funding to use or distribute for the dis uh, demolition of vacant or dilapidated buildings at property located at 67 Elm Street. City Clerk. Resolution number 925, to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the Department of Business and Economic Affairs for Invest New Hampshire Demo to provide funding to use or distribute for the demolition of vacant or dilapidated buildings at property located at 67 Elm Street, August 12, 2024. Whereas the City of Summersworth City Council authorized the city manager to apply for an Invest New Hampshire Demo funds through the State of the New Hampshire Department of Business and Economic Affairs for the removal of buildings and site work at 67 Elm Street. And whereas the city received notification that it has been awarded Invest New Hampshire demo grant in the amount of $204,944 for this purpose. And whereas the grant is a 100% grant and does not require any city matching funds. Now therefore be it resolved by the city council of the city of Summersworth that the city manager is authorized to execute any documents and agreements necessary for the grant's execution and take any and all other such actions relative to this grant determined to be in the best interest of the city. Sponsored by Councilors Nancy Cameron, Paul Goodwin, Don Austin, David A. Witham, Crystal Parody Catanzaro, Martin Pepin, Richard Michaud, Kenneth Vincent, approved city attorney. Thank you. In a second reading? Resolution number 925, to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the Department of Business and Economic Affairs for Invest New Hampshire Demo to provide funding to use or distribute for the demolition of vacant or dilapidated buildings at property located at 67 Elm Street. Thank you. Resolution 9-25, having been read a first and second time, is now open to amendment. Seeing no amendment, uh, Chair will look for a motion on Resolution 9-25. Councilor Pepin? Move for its adoption. Councilor Pepin moves for the adoption of Resolution 9-25, seconded by Councilor Austin. Discussion? All right. Seeing none, if you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 9-25, you'll state by saying yes. If you are not, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Cameron? Yes. Austin? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Michaud? Yes. Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Resolution 9-25 has been adopted. 
All right. <coughs> that brings us to agenda item 17, which is comments by visitors. Uh, Summers or City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinions and views at Council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7-C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the Council wishes to suspend the rules. Uh, speakers shall not enter into a debate with any person, the Mayor, City Council members, uh, City Manager, or Department Heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight? <laughs> If you wouldn't mind saying your name and ward which you live, thank you. So this time it was a race. Uh, Laura Berry, Ward 4. I just wanted to say thank you for suspending rules and reappointing me. I very much appreciate, appreciate that. I wanted to just give a little bit of an outside opinion on Resolution 1-25, I believe is what it was. Um, I've had quite a few people from the community come to me and ask about being on a board. How can they do that? And there is a little bit of a, per of a perception, and I know I'm being pot calling the kettle black here because I just got reappointed <laughs> that they don't think they can get on a board if all the members are full because it's kind of one of those unwritten they think everybody on the board will be reappointed and I know I just did that so I just want to put that out for food for thought that that's kind of the perception out there especially if we don't advertise that people are going to be leaving with um, resigning, reappointments, all of that. So I just want to throw that out because that has come up a lot going, we have no alternates. The alternates are going to turn into full members. Full members never leave because they just keep getting reappointed. So I just want to throw that out for food for thought. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else who wishes to speak tonight? Thank you. Again, if you wouldn't mind saying your name and where in which you live. Richard Brooks, Ward 1, 18 Linden Street. Um, <clears throat> I have to agree. Advertising, light is on. Hopefully you can hear me better. Sorry. Um, advertising the positions I do think is helpful. Um, I think just getting it out there so people are aware. I think we have alternate positions open on nearly every board. So I think recruitment really is the key here. We need to get the word out that we need more people. Um, the other thing I'd like to touch on is that retaining wall. Um, HTC's heard nothing about a plan for that property, except for one that obviously went with the old owner that obviously not going to be done now. Um, <clears throat> the saddest part about this is once that demolition was granted at, eight, at not 67, 80, 85 Elm Street, a couple different numbers here, um, all the granite went away all the granite that they could have used to rebuild the wall that looks historic and fits the character that our downtown and historic district has went out in trucks somewhere else it would have made a great wall to replace that foundation that we're looking at now and you know it's just another step in where we didn't get the whole picture at the beginning it's been piecemealed together with different changes and plans and I just realized that the paper said 135 apartments, not the 150 some. So apparently it's changed back to parking underneath again. Uh, I can't keep track of what these guys do. They keep changing their story. It's just, it's a mess if you ask me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who, who wishes to speak tonight? Seeing nobody else, we will move on to agenda item 18, which is closing comments by city council. <coughs> Uh, Councillor Witham, you're up first. Yeah, just a brief comment on uh, the, let's go back to board positions. Uh, uh, Todd Marsh on the school board, he's served on that board for many, many years now. Uh, seems to have aligned with most of my years on council. Um, he served on the council back in the day, so he's had a long and storied history here in this community. Um, if you were to put both appointed and elected board members, I guess, on a bell curve. He's on the far end of that bell curve in terms of his uh, performance, and I view that as his civility, his work behind the scenes, his thoroughness, his way to articulate issues. Uh, he's just a very, very good board member, and that skill set and his passion for our community will be deeply missed. I know he's not leaving the community, so hopefully if his uh, work-life balance improves in the, in the future and time allows, 
Uh, you certainly have my vote, even though I don't live in Ward 4, but uh, you get the point. So, uh, Mr. Robitis has served on the planning board for seemingly as long as I've served on the planning board. Uh, uh, I'm not sure that I've ever rubber stamped his approval on the planning board because he's a very good and valuable member on that planning board. Uh, contributes, he's thoughtful, uh, he often brings a sort of counter view to issues, so uh, it, it strikes a balance with, with, with that. Uh, and importantly, you know, he doesn't have a, a, a background in planning. He brings sort of that sort of everyday citizen view to it, uh, which I think is, is helpful. So uh, his service will be missed, uh, again, on the planning board, but just his presence in the community. If you go to any city event, uh, you know, the, the last week he was uh, with his wife, Linda, at the uh, National Night Out event, and that's just an example that he's ever present in the community, and those people are few and far between, so we'll miss his contributions both on planning board, but just in the uh, community as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Councilor Goodwin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just wanted to uh, provide my, uh, some clarity to my fellow counselors here on the 200 Main Street project. Um, the demo there is for selective demo, uh, abatement of hazardous materials, rot repair, make safe, uh, and mm -hmm. removal of uh, previously burnt down building foundations, the uh, one remaining fragment of the mill complex is going to be retained. It's just to remove debris from the fires and um, hazardous materials in that building. Um, that is what the scope of work is related to that grant for those interested. Um, I also wanted to um, thank the Summersworth Police Department uh, for um, a timely response to a accidental alarm uh, I set off at 200 Main Street while bringing some consultants through. Um, I <laughs> didn't think much. Uh, didn't think much of it when the alarm was going off, and I was just like, "Oh, my bad," and you know, like called my property management team, and they promptly got it shut off. And uh, by the time I turned around to come back out of the building, there were two uh, police officers walking down the driveway, um, and I realized that they got called. So the quick response. Uh, were very kind uh, to inform me, you know, not to do that again, to waste their time, but um, uh, understood. I uh, just wanted to say thank you for, uh, for your service. Um, also wanted to say, um, you know, uh, Councillor Parody Catanzaro is not with us this evening as she has a very ill family member. Her father's quite sick. Um, so my thoughts are with her and her family. Um, and if you see her, uh, say some kind words and let her know that we're here for her. Thank you. I did that at the middle school one time, <laughs> like on the weekend. <laughs> totally set the whole thing off. Anyway, Councilor Cameron. <laughs> thank you, Your Honor. Um, yeah, I'd just like to thank Todd Marsh for all his years of service to the community. He will be sorely missed. And to Paul Robitis, too, who's a very good friend of mine. I'm envious of him moving up to Conway. It's such a beautiful spot. I hope I'll still see him in the future. Um, he is a Summersworth born and raised gentleman, so I'm sure we'll still see him around at some point. Um, thank you to the National Night Out. It was a great turnout. Um, it was nice to get out and see the community involved. If you haven't been down to the Ash Street Park, go by. The butterfly is up. Um, it looks wonderful, so take a drive by. There is more to come on that. And Saturday is Don't Trash Summersworth. We're going to meet at St. Martin's Church from 2 to 3. And where we are at the corner of a bunch of um, streets, you can choose the street you want to go down and help clean up. And on the last note, congratulations to Salem, New Hampshire, who is going to uh, Little League World Series. Thank you. Next up, Councilor Austin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I want to add my comments uh, about the service uh, from Todd Marsh and Paul Robitis. Both gentlemen have uh, dedicated their lives to serving this community. Um, and it's gone beyond the actual boards that they provide service on. It, they've been outstanding community members to the city of Summersworth for a very long time. Um, and their, their appointed service will certainly be missed, but I hope they uh, will continue to serve the communities that they continue to reside in. We're going to miss them. I want to say thank you to Congressman Pappas and Senator Shaheen 
for their presence in the community recently. Uh, Congressman Pappas was at the uh, um, the solar land, the solar project uh, groundbreaking this morning. Uh, and Senator Shaheen was here a couple of weeks ago uh, over at the uh, Jules Bisson Park. Um, I think we, we've had a pretty remarkable uh, level of support from our federal legislative team, um, not the least of which is their presence here for those things. And, you know, community is, as Summersworth is not the largest community in New Hampshire, uh, but they took time out of their busy schedules to come and actually spend some decent amount of time here for bo both of those projects. So um, I want to say thank you to them for their ongoing support as well. Thank you. Next up, Councillor Pepin. Yes, I'd like to thank uh, Todd for all he's done. I know he sat up here for a time as a city council member. He sat on the school board. And knowing Todd, he'll be back sooner or later. So I, I hope he does come back because he's an uh, he, uh, uh, um, asset to this community. As far as Paul Robitis, uh, <laughs> we go back a long ways, probably over 50 years. Uh, I remember when he got out of high school, uh, when he was in high school, he used to hang around the fire station, ended up on the call department for a while. Uh, then he got involved with Benoit Sambler Service, which was right by Walmart. Um, he, he served under Chalk Ambulance, which was after Benoit's. He basically founded, uh, he worked for AMR. He basically founded American Ambulance, basically brought them in our community, and he did the same thing with Steward Ambulance. And I, I'd just like to say one thing about people don't really realize that he's left two of those jobs because of the, the way their companies were service in this community. He didn't think they were, they were serving this community well enough. And he, lo he basically left to help our community. And I, I think that that's, I don't know how many people would leave, leave a good job just because they didn't, because they believed in what they believed in, in, in the citizens of this city, mm -hmm. and that he felt that they weren't getting the, the coverage that they needed to be getting or the, or the, or the, or the help. Um, I know Paul's gonna be on the direct board of directors on Stewart's Ambulance, so he still will have some say in, in Stewart Ambulance, which is very nice to know. He says he's still going to come into this community here and there, so we'll probably see him here and there, which I'll be very, very glad for. And um, I, I can't say enough about him. Um, I will make a comment, though, I don't think many people know, but Summers, the city of Summers with all an ambulance. When I was hired permanent firefighter, there was an ambulance sitting in the fire station, which never went out on a call. We ended up going back to Benoist, thank God. Uh, so uh, we did own an ambulance at one time, so thank you. Councilor Vincent. Thank you. I'm going to take right off from Marty and uh, Councilor Pepin and uh, uh, Todd Marsh. Great guy. Uh, totally uh, dedicated service to the city. I love it. He's a very educated man. Great guy. And Paul Obitis, I've known him since Catholic school. I think we were both getting smacked around by some of the nuns because we were out of line. Um, but I've known him for a long time. And when we get on the fire department, he, he was a call guy and I was a new call guy. And we, and we hit it off and I knew him anyway. But what really stands out to me was um, when um, one of the companies that he worked for was going out of business or changing, and and he was going to move uh, American Ambulance in, and I stood there, right there at the uh, well, and I was the only firefighter from the Summers River Fire Department that stood and, and agreed with him be, and agreed that I think the move would be good because um, because I knew him and the goodness for the city uh, was definitely in Paul Robitis, and I just want to say thank you very much, Paul, because you didn't let any of us down, and you were true to your word, and uh, that means a lot to me, um, uh, and thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Councilor Gibson. Um, I won't take up your space repeating or affirming, but both gentlemen will be missed, both Mr. Marsh and Mr. Robitis in the community. Um, and as, as an aside, um, I don't think we say it often, and well, we probably do, just not me. Um, we have great prob public servants in this community.
whether it be public works, police department, fire department, or the people that work in City Hall. This is a small city that is dependent on the goodness of the people that work there, and we need to say thank you more often for what they all do for us. And what's really nice is um, a large percentage of those people are locals, nothing against the people who are, but um, they grew up in the town and they want to serve the, sorry, city, want to serve the city. And um, one more side comment, mentioning um, our representatives at the national level. Um, it's really nice that they take the time to come and visit a small place like this. But it also points out how truly unique the state of New Hampshire is. We are the only state in the U.S. where the state government is controlled by Republicans and every federal representative is a Democrat. But that's one of the reasons why we should keep our first in the nation primary. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Councillor Mishu. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to thank Don Ma Todd March for everything he's been doing and his ongoing effort and all the boards and committees that he was on. And I'm sure he will be back eventually. Paul Revitas, I'd like to thank him for all his many years of service on committees and boards that he served. And I also want to congratulate him on his upcoming retirement. And I can guarantee he will enjoy it. And I'd like to thank the police department for doing an outstanding job on the National Night Out. And thank you for having it hosted in Ward 5 at the Jewel Bison's Playground. It's Feather Ward 5, Nick Half. And this coming Sunday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., August 18th, right here on Main Street, uh, between Fayette Street and Washington Street, is the third annual Hilltop Classic Car Show. It's free for the public. I'd like to invite everybody to come down and check out some of the classic cars. I know the people that are involved putting it together, and they've been working diligently for at least three, four months now. So hope everybody come out this coming Sunday. And I got a couple things for Public Works. So I'll talk to them separately. And I'd like to thank Mr. Brooks for bringing up the granite blocks. One member of the community talked to me about that yesterday, wondering what happened. I do remember them talking to uh, um, HDC about it, and they requested that them possibly reutilizing them once the project is complete. They've been removed from site, and I'm really hoping that they will reutilize these granite blocks because it's part of our history. So, other than that, thank you, and everybody have a good night. Thank you. All right, next on our agenda is uh, item 19, future agenda items. Are there any items requested for future meetings? All right, no. Uh, next is 20, non-public sessions. We have none. Last is adjournment. Councillor Mishu moves that the City Council stand in adjournment till the next regularly scheduled meeting, seconded by Councillor Austin. Question for the Council is adjournment. If you're in favor, you'll stay by saying aye. If you're opposed, you'll stay by saying nay. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? All right, we are adjourned.